Imagine war has driven you out of your home. You find yourself in a camp with thousands of others. It rains. Among your possessions, a plastic cover to keep your hut dry. Some pots and pans to cook a simple meal. Then all of a sudden, shooting breaks out, panic. You're forced to flee again for a second time. When you come back the next day, the few things you still owned have been looted, sometimes by the very soldiers that were supposed to protect you. Welcome to the reality of the Magunga One camp in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC. This camp not only is a refuge for internally displaced persons, it's also a convenient source of essential goods for underpaid Congolese soldiers. There's several reasons. First of all, they don't have... Um, uh, their salaries are very, very low. Um, so oftentimes they don't have the necessary resources to... Uh, uh, for proper shelter and for basic necessities for themselves. Um, so that causes a lot of indiscipline and a lot of looting on their part also. The European Union, at the request of the Congolese government, in 2005 set up a mission to support reform and restructure the military administration. The USEC mission in the DRC provides advice and assistance, specifically to boost public confidence in the army. The chain of payments project must ensure that the soldiers are paid regularly. If the army soldiers are paid properly, they have less reason to loot. I believe um, it's one of the key things you can do to improve the situation here. While NGOs and the United Nations provide humanitarian aid to the people in the Mugunga One camp, the capital Kinshasa hosts a meeting between EU and Congolese army officials. The technical support takes place under the European Security and Defence Policy. To improve the situation, the government needs to have a clear view on the number of soldiers, the infrastructure and equipment. That's why in 2007 the EU has launched an audit of all units and a biometric census started in Kinshasa. I was asked when I arrived two and a half years ago to make sure that soldiers would be paid as regularly as possible. And in order to achieve this, the only way is to know how many soldiers there are. In two years, the collaboration between the EU and the Congolese army helped raise the soldiers' salary from $10 to $42. It's progress, but it's not sufficient. The only way of reducing and eventually stopping these abuses of power is to bring the soldiers back in barracks to make them lead a normal military life. The census will determine how much money the army requires. When the operation is completed, every Congolese soldier will have an individual biometric identity card that can't be falsified. People find it difficult to figure out if a soldier is a real soldier or not. This card will help them find out for good. The Chain of Payments project ensures secure payment procedures are set up. Account managers have been appointed at all Congolese army brigades and paying agents already are at work at all battalions. USEC mission advisors are still in the field to continue to assist and monitor payment operations. The plan, in fact, is the total separation of the chain of command and the chain of payments, because we've realized that there is a risk that the money does not always end up where it should. The audit, the census and the chain of payment are concrete projects to support the reform of the Congolese army. Some may argue the USEC mission is only a drop in the ocean, but the Democratic Republic of Congo is only a young democracy and it's therefore essential to have a modern management of the army. Aid workers in the east of the country fully agree. So there needs to be major investment and support in Congolese institutions so that eventually one day the Congolese state can stand on its own two feet. The mandate of the USEC mission goes clearly in this direction. It will continue throughout 2008.